Hello and welcome everyone to the Gold and Silver Club end of week review non-farm payroll special today on the 1st of August 2014 presented by myself Phil Carr and Nick Kelsey at the Gold and Silver Club. Today, we will be reviewing the latest developments in the commodities markets. We'll be analysing the week's performance. The live session will cover an end-of-week summary for the commodities markets. We'll be looking at the top trades of the week. We'll cover live market commentary and technical analysis. We'll also look at the week ahead, so the key events looking forward. And, of course, we'll be answering any questions you may have on today's session too. So, first of all, uh, before we go into the technicals, Gold has hit five-week lows as the U.S. recovery gains momentum. So gold price traded near a five-week low just today off the Federal Reserve tapered its monthly bond buying program by another $10 billion and gave an upbeat assessment of the economy at the conclusion of its two-day meeting on Wednesday. Prior to the FOMC statement on Wednesday, the U.S. Commerce Department reported that the U.S. economy grew at an annualized rate of 4% between April and June, the most in three quarters, which smashed expectations. This presented commodity traders with a highly lucrative opportunity to sell short gold against the U.S. dollar. The upbeat data falls into the camp of the U.S. monetary policy hawks who want to see interest rates rise sooner rather than later. However, there is concern in the marketplace that an accelerated U.S. economic, economic recovery raises the stakes for problematic price inflation down the road, and that could be bullish for gold. So traders are now shifting their focus toward the highly anticipated U.S. non-farm payroll report for July, which is scheduled for release today at 1.30 p.m. BST, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. This report is forecast to see a rise in non-farm payrolls of 230,000 in July versus 288 print in June. So regardless of the outcome, as always, the non-farm payroll announcement will present traders with attractive trading opportunities across the commodity markets. And we'll take a look at that on the technicals very shortly. Before we do so, I'm Phil Carr, professional trader, trainer and speaker. I'm the co-founder and director of the Gold and Silver Club. I specialize in teaching people how to make money from trading the most lucrative financial markets in the world. So gold, silver, oil, natural gas, agricultural commodities, I've trained thousands of individuals to become independent traders and successfully manage their own investment portfolio, also responsible for the research and the development of the Gold and Silver Club trademark strategies that have a proven track record of generating returns for traders. Also a regular contributor to a number of financial publications and speaking numerous trading seminars, webinars and workshops. Joining me in running the Gold and Silver Club is Nick Kelsey, professional trader, investment analyst and speaker. Nick began his career within private wealth management in 2002 before making the transition into proprietary trading. Prior to co-founding the Gold and Silver Club, spent several years coaching professional fund managers and traders internationally for some of the world's top tier hedge funds and investment banks. And through his first hand relationship with some of the world's most successful traders, discovered the formula, mindset and tools that can give any individual the definitive edge to trade in any economy. Also regularly writes for a number of global business and financial publications. We've appeared frequently on financial television. OK, so that's a bit of background on the Gold and Silver Club. Now, the price of gold currently is trading at $1,284 an ounce. So we are just off the lows here of 1280 yesterday. We'll take a look at that on the technical very shortly. Before we do so, we just go over the top trades of the week. There's been some good trade opportunities this week, again, using the Gold and Silver Club signature trading strategies. So first of all, earlier in the week, we had a lovely sell short opportunity, which uh, broke down further on the FOMC announcement on Wednesday. We had a risk on this trade of 75 points, so $750 for each lot traded for a profit as we came down to key support just yesterday of 250 points, so 2,500 US dollars for each lot traded for a three to one selling short WTI oil. We had a nice breakout this week as well. Uh, we had both breakouts on wheat and coffee as well. So we had on this particular trade a risk of 50 points, so $500 risk for a profit of 100 points, a so $1,000 profit for a three to one. And we've also had a sell short on wheat here. So the risk on the trade, 55 points. So each lot traded $550 for a profit of 135 points, so $1,350 profit for a 2.5 to 1 risk to reward. So we've had some nice opportunities on the softs as well as the energies. And now coming into today, 
we've got some very interesting setups here on the metals as well. We'll take a look at the US dollar, we'll take a look at gold, and we'll also take a look at the softs as well. So first of all, I want us to start off and we'll take a look at the US dollar index here. You can see the US dollar index, we discussed this last week, we had a neckline around the 81 uh, USD per ounce level here. So we can see this very key level at 81 providing a neckline, we had a V-shaped reversal pattern, and we've had a lovely breakout from that key zone at the 81 level over the course of this week. You can actually see we've come all the way up to test the highs of October 2013, of January 2014, and we've just about popped uh, our price above the resistance uh, channel here. You can see there's a horizontal resistance line. We're at 81.57 at the moment. So it's going to be very interesting today on non-farm payrolls to see whether the US dollar index has a full retracement here and we see a sell-off and come back to the major previous resistance zone of 81, which could provide strong support. Or if we do get a breakout, if the news is bullish today, for the US dollars, if the job numbers come in higher than expected, we could see a further breakout. There's really not too much resistance here at all for the US dollar on a breakout above yesterday's highs. So if we can break through yesterday's highs here, 81.66, gold will be in trouble. Gold would certainly, we would expect a further set off and a breakdown from 12.80 lows that we saw yesterday. So we are at a very important level at the moment for the US dollar index. So what we want to see again is whether the US dollar index will break out to the upside on non-farm payroll, in which case that will put a lot of pressure on the precious metals, or whether we get a full reversal here. We are in a resistance zone. We formed an inverse hammer yesterday on the daily. We haven't breached above yesterday's high yet at 81.66. That is the key level that the US dollar index needs to get above in order to put pressure on gold. Okay, So we're looking at these two scenarios, either a strong sell-off back down to previous resistance at 81 or we're looking for a breakout and we'd be looking for the next psychological resistance at 82 here for a breakout so that's the us dollar so we'll also take a look at gold here as well and um, what you do want to note on gold at the moment we've just got a raw chart here currently uh, i'm just going to just add it on some some levels for you just so you can take a look at where gold found support yesterday 1280 is a very important support zone for gold at the moment. So this is the key support level that gold needs to hold on today's non-farm payroll. If it does hold this, it could give a great buy opportunity here, and we might see a really nice, um, certainly a move back up to the 1300s on non-farm payroll. If we can get a, a supportive move of the 1280, you'll note there is a little bit of a downward trending channel, which is starting to form here on gold, and we're right at the lower end of this trend channel. You can see in the market this morning, is looking supportive for 1280. However, if we get a break below 1280, we're likely to really break down significantly lower. It could be about 200 point move back down to the 1265 level. You'll note that the current price is very close to the breakout that we had on the FOMC going back to June. So the, the breakout price from June was 1275. You can see this large candle, which was over a 400 point move here on the gold market from FOMC. It was a huge surge over the course of the Asia Pacific session, the UK and the US session the following day. 24 hours, we had this huge surge. If we take out the low of this candle at 12.75 as well, we are likely to put a lot of downward pressure on gold here. So we need to watch out for 12.80. If that breaks, it could be some great sell short opportunities that we may get a capitulation around the 12.65 zone. That's what I'll be looking for. Or we'll get immediately, we'll get a nice move. We'll see the US dollar sell off and we'll see a move back up the upper end of this channel, which would take us up to initially 12.92 and then 13.05. OK, so that's what we'd be looking at for a buy and for a sell. We'd be looking for a break below 12.80 and something along these levels down to 12.65. We do expect a volatile move on gold. Normally, to a non-farm payroll, we do get a very high uh, impact move on the gold market, on the other precious metals as well. So we'll be looking out to see which way gold is going to break today. So in 12.80, the key support for gold to hold now if we just take a look at some of uh, the energies here we'll take a look first of all we'll have a look at natural gas and natural gas on the storage inventories yesterday it did spike up to resistance but again it couldn't break it 3.890 very key resistance you can see on natural gas we're just channeling at the moment between key support key resistance we're just ricocheting between these levels now oil did actually break down on fomc and has broken down and gave us that sell short opportunity for 200 
and 50 points on WTI. This is what we're seeing on natural gas at the moment. So I'm looking either for a break above 3.890, which would give us a buy opportunity and potential breakout, or a break below 3.723. I would rather trade a, a break here of the lows because the trend is your friend here, and I would rather stay within the overall direction of the trend. We'll get more momentum to the downside than we will to the upside uh, at, at this present moment. So I'll be looking out for that again on the uh, non-farm payroll today. I want to see whether natural gas will break through 3.723. There's a nice little setup here. If we get a break about 3.890, we could also get a nice bounce to the upside and we'll start to be forming a, a bottom here. You can see there is also potential for a reversal pattern here as well, just based on the daily chart. But the neckline on that is at 3.890. So that's what we'll be looking out for, for a buy and for a sell. And of course, just within this trend channel, there are opportunities to buy and sell as natural gas stays within these zones. OK, so that's what we're looking at natural gas. Uh, moving over to the oils, we can see WTI uh, crude oil here. We did get a nice breakdown of price. We've actually come down to our take profit level at 97. We had a big sell off over the FOMC sell off yesterday. And we're now at a very important support zone. You can see the 97 level provided. It's just, again, a raw chart here provided a lot of resistance going back to uh, 2013. This is a key level where we have seen a lot of bounces, resistance in March, April, June 2013. Again, we found support here going back to April 2014, and we're sitting right at that level again now. So the 97 level is key. Uh, so what I would expect here again is either on non-farm payroll, we get a breakdown lower, and we could get quite a significant set-off here for oil, or we'll get a reversal, and we should get quite a nice buy opportunity here from the 97 level. So uh, we are sitting right at the 97 level at the moment. So the current price is actually 97.20. It won't take much to break support here, but we could also get a nice move, to, uh, a supportive move to the upside. So we'll be watching out for that as well on WTI for potential buy opportunities or a sell. We are at a very key event area, so it's going to be a fight between the bulls and the bears. Looking at Brent crude oil, what you want to note on Brent crude oil, we're also at a major support zone. So you've got, if you go across on the raw chart, again, you can see support on January 2014, going back to February, going back to April. This is a very key support zone, which resistance going back to May 2013. You've got a trend channel here as well, which meets the price where it is at the moment. So very important levels for oil here. It could be a great opportunity for a long or if we break support, it could provide a very nice uh, sell short opportunity. If we can really break through the 105.50 level, which is holding support, we should get a lot of uh, stop losses get flushed and we could see a big move lower here. So we'll be looking out for that on oil today as well. So you've got gold sitting at key support and oil sitting at key support. So very important um, event areas for both of these markets as we go into NFP today. OK, we've also had uh, some nice breakouts this week on coffee. You can see. Uh, we discussed this actually last week. We had a, a nice uh, V-shaped reversal pattern here, breakout from 182. You can see how well this worked out. So we had a very key level of resistance at the 182.73. We got a nice breakout yesterday, and that gave us an over 120-point move to the upside. So coffee, lovely move to the upside just yesterday. Nice breakout there. Uh, also, if you take a look at the other, energy, uh, the other softs at the moment, uh, wheat actually looking interesting. Wheat has broken out a little bit of its current downward trending channel. There is a larger downward trending channel here as well for wheat, which the market has been in really since June. And uh, we started off this big downward trend from May where we started to set off. We are touching right at the upper end of that channel at the moment. So we do want to uh, see if we would get either a breakdown or reversal on wheat here or whether we get a breakout from the upper end of this resistance channel. So we either get a reversal, we'll come down, we'll break 5.18, and that will give us a very nice sell short bounce back down to the 505 level, or we could get a breakout to the upside. So we're, again, at a key event area. So it's not unusual for markets to do this just prior to major news announcements to be just pausing at key event areas, waiting for either a breakout or a full reversal. If we look at corn, corn actually uh, strongly correlated to wheat is looking weaker. We can see corn is actually knocking right at support here. We've got a support zone at 355.94, resistance at 368. We've just been consolidating for the last seven days, just ricocheting between support and resistance. If we can break below 355, we should have a pretty decent sell short here. Again, on the core market, we'll be looking out for that as well. You can see here a breakdown. The next real key psychological support level is at 300. We could really move significantly lower here on corn. So I'll be looking out for that for a sell short. You can see yesterday's candle daily 
close right at the daily lows, and we doesn't take much at all now to just uh, get confirmation and break below that. So corn looking very good indeed here as well for a setup. Uh, we'll also take a look at some of the uh, other metals now as well. So we'll take a look here. We'll move over to silver. So silver does have a downward trending channel uh, at the moment, which has been formed from about mid-July. So the last two weeks or so, we've been testing this downward trending channel. We are holding just about key support here at the 2026 levels. A similar situation to gold. We'll either hold support or we'll break lower to the next key support, which is at the $20 an ounce level, which is where we rallied on the FOMC going back to June. So that will be a key level, or we may get a retracement back up to the upper end of this resistance channel. If we look at palladium daily, palladium is still holding up fairly strong. It's holding up relatively stronger than the other metals here. We are seeing this upward trending channel is still intact. We've got a smaller upward trending channel where the market is testing that at the moment. You can see we've been in a very strong uh, channel here since April 2014, and we are just continuing to consolidate at the moment. So awaiting the non-farm payroll announcement for more movement here, but uh, potentially a nice buy opportunity for palladium if it holds. Platinum didn't do as well. Platinum getting a little bit of a breakdown. We do have some horizontal support here around the 1457 level uh, on the charts. We're actually starting to break lower than yesterday's daily low here as well. So we've got a downward trending channel that you can see working its way out on platinum as well. So we'll see whether we get further downside or whether the non-farm payroll does support the metals here. So at the moment, Platinum, one of the weaker metals, and we're also copper is uh, getting a bit of a pullback at the moment as well. So you can see copper has just come down, not too significant. We've still got an upward trending channel on the copper market, and we've got this uh, trend channel here that you need to pay attention to as well. But we're sitting on a lot of support zones at the moment. So rather than knocking out resistance zones, looking for potential breakouts to the upside, we're sitting at a lot of support zones for the metals and energies where we may see potential for a breakdown lower here or a full retracement back up uh, if these levels get supported, a full retracement back up to resistance zones. OK, so that's what we'll be looking out for. Again, the key markets to be watching today, definitely the US dollar index is going to be very important uh, for further direction today for the energies and also for gold. So uh, the US dollar index is very close to its key resistance levels. If we do get a breakout above 81.66, that will put a lot of pressure on the metals. So we'll just have a look at the key announcements now as we come into non-farm payroll very shortly in the next couple of hours or so. So the week ahead, the key events looking forward, we of course have at 1.30 p.m. BST, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, the U.S. non-farm payroll report. So non-farm payroll report measures the change in the number of people employed during the previous month. So it excludes the farming industry. Job creation is, of course, the foremost indicator of consumer spending, which accounts for the majority of economic activity. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the US dollar, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. Monday, the 4th of August at 3 p.m. BST, 10 a.m. Eastern time, we have CB Employment Trade Trends Index. This report uses data from eight labor market indicators, which makes up the Employment Trends Index, which includes the initial unemployment claims, number of employees hired, job openings, industrial production, real manufacturing, and trade sales. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the US dollar, and a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish, which will inversely affect the metals. Tuesday, the 5th of August, we have at 3 p.m. BST, 10 a.m. Eastern time, the ISM non-manufacturing PMI. So the Institute of Supply Management non-manufacturing purchases managers index PMI reports as an indicator of the overall economic conditions for the non-manufacturing sector. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the US dollar and a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. Then as we move into midweek on Wednesday, the 6th of August at 3.30 p.m. BST, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, we have the US crude oil inventories. That data reports a number or barrels of crude oil commercial firms have in their inventory. Commercial firms report those inventory levels to the Energy Information Administration on a weekly basis. So a higher than expected reading should be taken as bearish for crude oil prices, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bullish. Thursday, the 7th of August at 1.30 p.m. BST, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we have the U.S. initial jobless claim. That data measures the number of individuals who filed for unemployment insurance for the first time during the past week. So it is the earliest US economic data. Week to week numbers can be volatile. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the US dollar. A lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. 
And then Thursday, the 7th of August at 3.30 p.m. BST, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we have a U.S. natural gas storage report. So the Energy Information Administration, the EIA natural gas storage report, measures the change in the number of cubic feet of natural gas held in underground storage during the past week. Uh, prices that are higher than expected readings should be taken as bearish for natural gas, and whilst lower than expected readings should be taken as bullish. So those are the six key announcements we need to look out for for commodities over the next week. Of course, the most important being non-farm payroll at the moment, which will be in two hours' time. Right, so those of you who would like to find out more about the Gold and Silver Club and request information on our live trading room program and our daily trade calls, uh, you can very simply find out more by going to www.jointhegoldandsilverclub.com or you can contact us by telephone at our Hong Kong, Budapest, Johannesburg, New York or London office. I'll keep those numbers on the screen for you very shortly. And of course, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter at www thegoldensilverclub.com. You receive free weekly reports on the precious metals, energies, agriculture, live market analysis, and prices. Okay, so I shall leave it there for you to get in touch. So that's it for today's session, everyone. So uh, we look forward to hear from you. Good trading for non-farm payroll today, and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.